Hi guys, I'm Vanessa. Welcome to Swahili Food. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make mahamri. Now I've already done the tutorial for mahamri before, but I thought I would revisit it and just try and um, spruce it up a little bit for you guys. There's been a huge debate about the name mahamri, so I think after the whole debate, it's safe to say it, we'll call it Mahamri in Mombasa and Mandazi in Tanzania. Mandazi is Ndao's chunky, but Mahamri is hollow inside and it's essentially what we open up and stuff with things like Mbazi, of which I'll link a tutorial up here for you. Up here for you. I started by adding three cups of all-purpose flour into a bowl. Please don't use self-raising flour. To that, I added a small teaspoon of instant yeast, followed by eight tablespoons of sugar. And I'm using brown sugar here, but you can use regular sugar. There's nothing wrong with it. I just kind of, that's what I had in hand, and I like the taste of it. Next, I added a teaspoon of ground cardamom. If you've got fresh cardamom, I recommend you use that instead. Just grind them. Next up comes some milk. You can use a dairy-free option. If you're going to use regular milk, I'm using coconut milk. If you're going to use regular milk, please add two tablespoons of melted butter. So I started with about one and a half cups of milk. Coconut milk, of course. Don't add more than that because um, You'd rather have a too little liquid to start off with than too much. So just give it a good mix. And initially it's going to look like nothing's going to happen, nothing's going to come together. Just keep mixing. And this is, of course, a lot easier to do in your mixer. But I thought I'd do it by hand just to show you that you can do it by hand as well. Now look, it's a, mine's a gloopy mess, so I did add a bit too much liquid. So if that happens, just... Add about a teaspoon, about a tablespoon or two of flour and knead until the dough comes together like that. It's going to be a little bit sticky to the touch, so don't worry about that. That's okay. Next, you want to section your dough off into four pieces. And I've got a baking tray lined with some parchment paper, and I'm lightly dusting it with flour. You need this to rise, but if you want to freeze your dough, I suggest you do it before it rises the first time. So I'm just going to show you what I do. I like to put at least one or two pieces aside to freeze. So I just take it before it's risen the first time, put it in your glass container, cover it, and I highly recommend you write what it is and the date you've made it, because I don't know if this has happened to you, but sometimes I have stuff in my freezer and have no idea what it is. So don't skip this crucial step. It will make your life a lot easier down the road. If you're not going to be freezing this, then you can continue with the tutorial as shown. I then just um, form a nice ball and then put it in my baking tray and use some reusable plastic reusable plastic bags and then just set it aside to rise a second time use this time to do some much needed cleaning now it's written it's risen the first time take one out and then you just want to roll it out using your rolling pin just be gentle here you don't want to make it too thin because if you roll them out too thin then they won't puff up nicely you I like a little meat inside mine Guys, it's very important when you're putting your slices, your mahamri slices, to rise a second time, you really have to ensure that you lightly dust the surface. If you don't do this, your mahamri slices will stick to the surface and then it's game over. You're going to try and peel them off and they're going to stick to it and it, you're going to cry. I've cried, so I'm sure you're going to cry. So after they've risen a second time, you need to make sure you've covered this. After they've risen a second time, which is about 30 minutes, you want to then gently add them to your oil. 
My oil was preheated and you can test this by putting a wooden skewer in there. If bubbles form, then you're good to go. Keep your heat on medium low and keep flipping the mahamri over until you get the color you desire. If you don't keep flipping them over, they, they're not gonna puff up nicely. So that's the secret, just keep flipping. And then when they, when they get to the color you like, then you just set them aside on some kitchen paper. Another variation is you can add some sesame seeds, gently press them in there and then fry. Although I recommend you add them just uh, before you start rolling the discs out the first time. That way they stay in better. And there you go. How beautiful is that, you guys? It is the perfect vehicle to stuff with Mbazi. I'll link a recipe here for you. And that's it. See, guys, it's super, super easy. I told you, there's really nothing to it. Of course, it takes a little bit longer if you're counting in the rising times. But other than that, it's really not that difficult. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you haven't joined the Swahili Food family, do click that subscribe button. And while you're hovering around there, make sure you click the bell icon so that you get a notification when a new tutorial comes out. You don't want to miss the upcoming tutorials this month, you guys. Catch you later. Happy cooking.